of you already over the the years for different reasons. Uh, we're here to discuss the Little League Data Center this afternoon. How many are familiar with the Little League Data Center? Good. Hopefully what I'll be able to do is show you some features that you're not familiar with this afternoon. Uh, since we introduced a new data center last year, uh, there were some things we never really publicized. I know a lot of people found it on their own. The first thing I wanted to do was give you a little background on the data center. Back in 1999, there was a company called MyTeam.com. Not sure if anybody remembers them or not, but they had a vision of developing a Little League network. And one of their things that they did was, in combination with Little League, was to start the Little League data center. At that time, it was basically just for leagues and districts to be able to put their officers out there and upload rosters. That was all it was intended for. Uh, over the years, we evolved that to be able to do online charters, to be able to do more than just upload the rosters. We gave the districts the ability to then look at what their leagues did, what chartering information they had, what tournament information they had. Of course, my team was bought by Active in the early 2000s. Active continued the data center up until 2010, and they would have continued it after that, but Little League decided it was time to, after 10 years, to do a redesign of the data center, get more modern, get up to times. So we went out and we uh, did bids with several different companies, and we ended up with a company called Point Streak, which now hosts the data center and maintains it. A little different than Active, when Active worked with us, it was sort of like a, a sideline to them, and they helped us with it, but it was it wasn't their primary goal. With Point Streak, when we give them something to do, we, we've paid them to do it and they do it as quickly as possible. So that's one of the reasons why we've changed. Uh, of course, our goal with the data center has always been to give the districts and leagues information so they can share that information so we can eliminate paper. So what I'd like to do is actually show you where the data center is at log into the data center, and then we're going to walk through a district in California and show you each option that's out there. Uh, I forgot to mention Ron Smith is sitting over at the laptop. Uh, I'm sure many of your leagues have worked with Ron in uploading rosters. He usually gets about 1,000 to 1,500 emails a year that he helps leagues with, and I wouldn't want to count the number of phone calls that he helps them with. So. So, do we want to go directly to the, the website and log in? Okay, if there's anybody that's not familiar with the data center, the login is located under the district officers, and it's about halfway down, it says data center. If you lose your password, or your access code, there's an explanation on the front of how to get it. So if your leagues do not have it, uh, there's an email that says to email access code at littleleague.org, which again is Ron. So uh, the other thing is, and I've done this for a lot of districts, if you would like the access codes for all your districts, send me an email and I'll send you all their league IDs and access codes so that you can make sure they have it. That way you can make sure they're using the data center to its full extent. So at the top of the data center, you see where we have messages from Little League. Uh, we've put some links up there, and we can change this at any time, and which is different than the old data center. The old data center, we again had to put a request in to our partner, and when they got around to doing it, they can do it. Just this afternoon, I put a message up there. It says, online chartering will be available on Tuesday, October 16th. So next week, we will open up online chartering. So the leagues will be able to start chartering. So the first several links up there are just links to existing sites. Uh, you can go to the Little League store. I'm sure you're all familiar with the facility survey. The facility survey is where you go out to Musco and update your facility survey plan for the ASAP plan. Uh, the next one is your ASAP plan status, which is also on the Little League website. Then we have officials, logos, and artworks. I don't know if anybody's gone into that, but if you need the Little League logo, 
it's a full high resolution logo that's out there that you can download to your PC and use for your leagues or your districts. And then again, like I said, I just put that message there for the online chartering that'll be available next week. Normally, the next thing you would see where it says charter application, you would, you would either see that 2013 charter application is available, or you would see that you've already chartered and it's been approved, and then you would see out at the end it would say an edit button. But since today we're sort of in the middle between seasons, we're switching from 2012 to 2013, you don't see that option up there. The next option we'd like to go into is manage district officers. You can see the first thing you see is all your district officers that are there and what their titles are. You can edit any of those district officers except yourself. That is the only officer that we don't allow anybody to edit and that's because you're elected through an election process so that has to go through Little League and we maintain that part. So at any point you could change any of your officers, you can add them, you can delete them, you can update their information. If you go past your officers, you'll see all the leagues that are in your district. If you click on one of those leagues, then it will show you all their officers. You have the ability to view all the information for that officer, but you cannot change it. The one thing we're going to do, and it's actually on the last slide, is we just got approval from Pat Wilson to allow the DAs to change the league presidents. Because a lot of times we don't get the league presidents until weeks or months after it happens, but you as a district administrator know who the new league president is. We're going to add that feature to it. That'll probably be in about a month that'll be there that you'll be able to go in and edit the league president for any of the leagues and update the information so that we have accurate information. By having accurate information, it means when we send an email, it's going to the right person. When we send a mailing, it's going to the right person. So it's important that if your leagues do not maintain it, that you help us out and maintain it. One of the features we added in the new data center, if you scroll back up, Ron, uh, should be is the export of all league and district officers to Excel. I don't know if you ever run across this where you need to do a mailing or you need to do an email to all your league presidents or all your safety officers, but by clicking on the export, that'll take all the officers in your district and all your leagues and put them into a spreadsheet with all their information. You could then do a mail merge, you could select the column with all their email addresses and you could send emails to them if you wanted to. You can sort it by the type of officer it is. Uh, Ron, do you want to go ahead and just do an export? As you can see, it has all the information that pertains to every league officer with the league name, the league ID, and out to the right hand side would be the email address, their phone numbers, everything you have. So just by doing this export, you sort of now have a cardex of everything you need to know about your leagues. So again, you can see why it's important to have your leagues update their officers, keep them up to date, because that way you know the information. Okay, any questions on officers at all? Okay, we'll go back to the main menu. We'll go to manage player rosters. Now the first thing I want to show you is the fourth button is view league roster status. At a quick glance, this would now show you every league that submitted rosters through the data center, how many players they sent and how many coaches they sent, coaches and managers they sent to us whether their roster upload was successful because it is possible that they could have had errors and we would reject it. So at a quick glance you can see the status of all your leagues and whether they've sent rosters to us. As you can see in this district we had one that didn't send a roster. Uh, the next thing we wanted to show you is from here you can export the rosters of your league. 
if you go to the select league, you can do select all leagues in your district, or you could select just one league. You can select which division you want. If you just wanted their majors division, you could select that, or you can say all divisions. Then you could actually select if you're looking for a specific team in that league, or you can say all teams. See, it'll open it right up on the website that you can look at it. But again, there's an export button there that you can export the information to a spreadsheet. And let's say, and I I'm, I'm, don't know if any of your districts have run into this, but where a league wants to leave Little League, but you want to get in touch with the parents to still try to keep them there. By exporting all the players in that league, you would have their addresses and their phone numbers and you could do a mass mailing to those parents to try to keep them in the Little League instead of letting them go to another organization. I know Ron and I both get a lot of calls from district administrators and they want to see the rosters that their leagues have submitted. Well, now you can go in. And as long as they're using the data center, you have access to those rosters. Any questions? Right now, since we just started last year, this will be the first year, but now next, next year, this current season, you'll put 2013 in, and then you'll be able to go back to 2012 as well. So it'll keep building year by year. Unfortunately, with a million 500,000 players, it's, it's tough to go back and reload things. Yes? What if you have leagues that just don't load in their rosters? Should that, is that something that should be enforced and Yes, yes. I think, I think, and I'm not sure that they, they may touch on this tomorrow, that rosters or player registration data is going to become part of the safety plan. In order to be able to have your safety plan approved, I think in 2014, it's going to be one of the requirements of a safety plan that you do. We have about 70% of the leagues that do turn in rosters, but a lot of them still turn them in on paper. And if they turn them in on paper, it doesn't do you any good. You can't get it. So we're trying to add some new features this year to make it easier for leagues to do it. And I'll get into that at the end. So, But I'm sure you will always have leagues that want to use paper. Any other questions on Ross? Yes. Yes, this is only available to the DA. Yes. And I just left for being a president. I can still access as legal president. I can't do that. Right. So you need to send an email to Ron okay. at accesscode at littleleague.org, okay. and he'll send you your password, and then you'll be able to access. Yes. The only thing a league can do, which is different, they can only export their own rosters. Okay, any other questions on rosters? Yes. Ron Smith. And I just want to ask if you could repeat something. Did you say that as DAs, we can get the um, codes for each of our individual leagues? Yes. If you email me or Ron, we will send you the codes for all your, your leagues. Because a lot of the DAs have found it's, it's easier when they have like, uh, you have a district meeting where all your league presidents come to, to hand them out and give them to them. Because just like your new DAs, there's a lot of new league presidents. So we rely, it's easier for us to give them to you and then you can give it to them. Once you give it to them, they can change it so that you don't know what it is anymore. But most of them keep it the same. Okay. All right, back to the main menu. Background checks. What the background check does, it shows you every league in your district, and it shows you the last date that we got a report from LexisNexis. This is information that we get from LexisNexis. 
So on 2012-10-10, we received a report from them. It shows how many background checks we feel the league should have done, which I believe the number is six per team. And then it shows you how many they've actually done through LexisNexis. Now, that's not saying they haven't done background checks. They may have done it some other way, but they have not used what Little League prefers, and that's LexisNexis. Okay? Correct. Uh, you know, I think it's November 1st. I think November 1st they switch over. I think I just got an email the other day that said they were going to switch November 1st. We're just like some of our accounts, when we looked at them in the past, the mm -hmm. league said, no, we've done more than that. Right. But, yeah, this is from, would be at least from January of this year through now. But I think I did see where they switch in November. But uh, you can ask Jim Ferguson or Brent that tomorrow, and they can give you the exact answer on that. Okay. Yes, sir. I believe that's what I saw. Again, I would double check with Jim tomorrow. I believe when LexisNexis sent me this report the other day, I thought it said that as of November 1st, they were switching over to a new year. So, but have him confirm that. Yes. Getting back on the, to the screen, talk about the poster, <coughs> post spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried to convert the, the spreadsheet into the text the TXT to upload to you, but I've never done that. So I've seen the, the whole spreadsheet to Ron, and he has done that, but... Yes. What, what is, uh, would, would you prefer us to try to convert and send to you, to try to do upload or just send to you the, the spreadsheet? We prefer that you try to do it, okay. but we realize not everybody's going to be able to get it to work, and that's why Ron and I don't mind helping the leagues to do it because if we can get them to do at least send it to us at least we have it electronically versus having it on paper so and again we'll we will try to enhance the process of player roster uploads over the years because we know it's not always the most friendliest way of doing things so it's one of the areas we keep trying to improve on okay Back to the main menu. All right, view charter information. We're currently in the process of switching years. So as of now, we somehow, because of this process, we lost 2012, which they have to reload. So it only shows 2011. But again, if you were to click on any of your leagues, it would show you, normally it would show you what they had chartered in 2011 and 2012. They said, well, we're in the process of switching over and, and somehow they made a mistake and so they have to reload 2012. So that should be back there next week. Again, just like on the player rosters and on the uh, officers, if you go back up to the top, you'll see there's an export where you can export all the charter information in an Excel spreadsheet. And this will keep building from year to year. Uh, so five years from now, there'll be seven years worth of history out there for each league. And we get a lot of requests from leagues that say, can you tell me how many teams we had five years ago? Because they're trying to get grants or something like that from the local community. So we feel this will help them to be able to have a history out there that then they can take to their local area recreation commissions or whatever to help get information. The other thing, if, Ron, if you close that league, you'll see it shows you the status of the league right after it. Right now, because we're switching, they're all not received except one. The one says it's on administrative hold, which administrative hold is a finance hold. That means they owe us money and they cannot charter until that money is paid. They will not receive a charter. They cannot go online and charter. 
There's other types of holds. There could be an insurance hold. There could be a non-compliance hold. So whenever you see a hold after that leak, you know that there's something with that leak that's wrong and they're not going to be able to charter online and they won't get a paper charter. Any questions? Okay. Charter committee waivers. These are all the waivers that come to Williamsport. Uh, they are in